In this video, we will be looking at an introduction to numerical optimization. So far, the optimization we had been looking at was essentially theoretical optimization. We were just looking at analytical expressions. In this video, we will see an introduction to how we can do the same thing numerically. And specifically, we will be looking at an algorithm called gradient descent, which is sort of the workhorse for uh, most of uh, deep learning. So, why is it that we need numerical optimization? Uh, we were looking at uh, shapes of this sort. Okay. So, so far what we were looking at was a case where suppose you have some f of x and let us say x is a vector and has two components x 1 and x 2. In that case, if you knew f of x as an analytical function of x 1 and x 2, then you could use you know uh, various ideas such as setting gradient of f equal to 0 and you have standard uh, methodologies to find out what uh, the appropriate minimum or maximum is. However, most of the cases what happens is we do not have explicit expressions. Okay. So, you do not really know what f is. So, an explicit expression would be something of the sort j of w is w 1 square plus w 2 square plus w 3 square plus 4. A small note for starting from this video, I will start talking of optimization in terms of j and w because that is the notation we will ultimately use when we go to deep learning. So, usually what we know is the function only as a black box. So, that is some w comes in or some x comes in and some f comes out. Um, so, similarly some w comes in and some j comes out. You do not really know analytical expression is unknown. Okay. So, this is a proper black box. Um, we will see a couple of sub cases of this later on in this video, but generally what happens is you know let us say x 1 is 1, x 2 is 2 and it suddenly tells you uh, that j or f is 5. Similarly, any time you give an x 1 and x 2 it is able to give you uh, uh, a j or an f, but you still want to optimize it. In such case the methods that we use so far are not really uh, ut uh, usable. So, in this case, um, in the case of deep learning this black box is typically a neural network or something of that sort. So, what we want to find out is something that can deal directly with numbers rather than with analytical expressions and that is why you need numerical optimization as against analytical optimization. So, here is a simple idea. What you want to do is to you want to drive the gradient of the function that you are trying to minimize or maximize to 0. Okay. So, remember uh, for this we are using the notation the function is j and the variable that we are optimizing over we are calling that w. So, grad j w we want this to go to 0 specifically the 0 vector because remember gradient is a vector, but we do not have an analytical expression for j. Okay. So, the iterative process is as follows you take a guess. Okay. So, this is always the iterative process in anything not just optimization whichever variable you are trying to find out whether it is a linear system of equations whatever system of equations you are trying to solve or optimizing you do not know w which is optimum. So, you take a guess. Okay. So, here the superscript k refers to the iteration number we will see a few examples later on in this slide. So, you take a guess. Okay. So, you run through the black box this gives you a value this gives you a value of j. Okay. This might or might not be the optimal value. If you were a really good guesser, you will automatically get the right value, but generally you won't. Okay. Um, then you find out gradient of w. Okay. So now a question might arise: If you only have the function as a black box, how are you going to find out gradient of w? We will discuss this in the subsequent video. Okay. But assume that you have a method of finding out not only j, but also gradient of j as a number. Now, suppose this gradient turns out to be 0 you stop, if not you take a guess, you take a new guess. Okay. Now, how do you take a new guess? Will you guess this randomly? No, it turns out that there are specific methods to find out improved guesses based on the w you got and the grad j you got you can actually get a better guess. Okay. So, this method of improving your guess is what is called gradient descent. So, let us take the example of a gradient descent in a simple scalar case, a simple scalar case like j of w where w is now a scalar a single number. Ok. 
Okay. So, let us say it looks like this. Okay. We need not know what the specific function is. We just need to know that we are trying to get here. Now, let us say this is the actual W optimum, but your guess is this. Let me call it W 1 or W 0. This is our guess. Now, when you take this guess, the j you get will be corresponding to this guess. So, this is j, this is w and we can automatically see that this is not optimum. Why is this not optimum? Because at this point d j d w is not equal to 0. Okay. Now, if you treat this as a game, from this w you have two choices. You can either move to the left or you can move to the right okay, in order to improve your guess. Now, looking at this picture, we automatically know that we have to move to the left. How do we know this? If you find out the slope at this point, so d j d w here is actually positive. If it is positive, we know that 0 lies somewhere here. So, you actually say w is w minus something. Okay. This something often is written as some alpha multiplying by multiplied by the slope. So, that if you are here and the slope is negative, you actually will go to the right. Okay. So, this is the simple idea behind gradient descent. Our task is basically to improve our guess for w. For a scalar, this is fairly straightforward. The new guess is the old guess minus alpha times d j d w, where alpha is an arbitrary parameter. Okay. It is a positive arbitrary parameter this parameter is often called the learning rate. We will see that once again now. Okay, so, now let us take the more complicated vector case. Okay. So, you have a whole manifold. Let us say once again you have j w 1 w 2. Once again you guess we can see that the actual minimum is here. What is drawn here at the bottom are contours recollect from our uh, discussion of multivariable calculus, the contours basically are collapsed. So, if you think of this as a series of rings, each of which is of constant value, if you collapse all of them or this is the kind of contour that you will get. These contours are what are called level sets, basically lines of equal value. You would see this also in something like if you see the weather channel, you will see this. Okay. You will see lines of constant pressure or lines of constant temperature which are moving along. Okay. So, they are a representation of the function. Okay. So, suppose here is just the contour drawn. Okay. So, on one line the value of j is constant. Okay. So, we want to come to this point which is actually the minimum, but instead let us say I guess somewhere here. Okay, so, this is my w guess. Okay. So, somewhere here is my guess. The first guess is here. Now, I want to move in the right direction. Now, remember moving unlike 1D now is will be in two, di two directions. Okay. So, the delta w or the change in w that you have to give actually is a full vector. You have to say how much you want to move in x and how much you want to move in y direction. Okay, so, you have to give both this. Luckily for us, we have a nice theorem which says that we can move in the direction which decreases the maximum. Okay. So, for example, if you are here, you would like to move in this direction where the decrease is the sharpest. So, that you can think of this as a ball which is rolling downhill and you want to go as fast as possible to the bottom. So, you would like to move in a direction where the change in j is the maximum or it is the steepest and it turns out that the gradient gives exactly the direction that we are looking for. Okay. So, we will show a quick proof of this actually not nearly at the end of this video, but in the next video, uh, but we will show a quick proof of this. Okay. So, the general gradient descent algorithm it turns out is a very simple generalization of the scalar case. The new w remember this is a vector is the old w minus alpha times grad j which is also a w. Okay. 
So, you take the steepest descent direction, multiply it by a parameter just to adjust the size of the step and then move from there. Uh, this will become a little bit clearer as we go through a couple of examples. Okay. Alpha is a very important parameter called as I said earlier the learning rate. This is something that we have to choose. Okay. So, let us take an example. Let us take a very simple function for which we already know the minimum. Okay. So, let us take the function j is w 1 square plus w 2 square plus 4. Okay, we know that the bottom is here, the actual minimum is at 0, 0. Here are the contours which are drawn here, these are circles, these are circles because j is a constant when w 1 square plus w 2 is square is a constant which means these are circles centered at 0. Okay. So, let us take the gradient of this, analytical gradient is simply 2 w 1, 2 w 2 vector. So, the iterative formula that we get for this is remember w vector nu is w vector old minus alpha times grad j vector. This grad j has two components, so which means w 1 is w 1 minus alpha times the first component which is 2 w 1 as I have written before. I have denoted k plus 1 and k instead of old and new. So, old I am calling k, new is called k plus 1 so that we can keep on iterating. Okay, start from the first guess to the second guess and so forth. Okay. Similarly, the second component also the works the same way 2 w 2 k comes from the second component of the gradient. Okay. So, this is the iterative formula. We know that the actual minimum is at 0 0 as we said. Let us start with some random guess, suppose we give a bad guess of 3 comma 4. So, that on this curve is somewhere here. Okay. So, this is my first guess, I want to go here. This is the ideal w star. So, now how we can uh, proceed is by actually choosing some value of this constant alpha. This alpha, so we will take four different choices just so that you can see a range of behaviors for what happens. So, let us say alpha is, we will start with alpha is 2, we will look at 1, 0.1 and 0.5. Okay. So, let us start with alpha equal to 2, um, we are starting at 3, 4, let us say alpha is equal to 2. Okay. So, let us look at a simple table. So, let us look at iteration 0, this is our initial guess. Our w was 3 comma 4, I am um, not putting the transpose each time, please understand that we I am treating it as a row vector instead of a column vector, but works the same way. Okay. Now, grad j is simply 2 w 1, 2 w 2 which is 6 comma 8, j the cost is 3 square plus 4 square plus 4, remember 3 comma 4. So, this now comes to 29 and now we can calculate w k plus 1 which is 3 comma 4 minus alpha which we chose to be 2 multiplied by 6 comma 8 and if you calculate it, it comes to minus 9 minus 12. So, it has gone far away. Okay. So, we started here and we have gone somewhere outside of the picture and you can see that this is actually not doing quite well. I would like to come here, but I have gone far away somewhere else, but let us see how it goes further. So, suppose I start with minus 9 minus 12 and then proceed again using the same formula grad j now is 2 w 1, 2 w 2 which is minus 18 minus 24. If you calculate j, j has actually increased. Ideally, we would like j to always decrease. This does not always happen in gradient descent, but you can see that it has increased tremendously. Okay. If you calculate w k plus 1, now it has come to 27, 36. So, all the way from here, now you have gone somewhere else. Okay. If you see in this picture, you were you started somewhere here 3 comma 4 at this point and then we went somewhere far out, then we went somewhere else. So, we are actually going further and further away. So, if I put 2736, I see that my j has increased from 229 to 2029 and w has become worse. So, this kind of process
where intuitively we see that j is actually not coming down, but it is going further and further away okay, from the actual solution. Even if you do not know the actual solution, you can at least see that j is increasing. Okay. So, j our cost function is actually increasing and we are going at worse and worse places rather than better and better places. So, this is a case which is a divergent case of alpha. So, unhappy with this we try a slightly lower alpha, okay. it is always a good prescription to try lower alpha in case a higher alpha does not work. Okay. So, once again we start here. But instead of alpha equal to 2, if we use alpha equal to 1, we get minus 3 minus 4, which at least seems a little bit better. Okay. So, you started here 3, 4 and we came here minus 3 minus 4. We wanted to come here, maybe hopefully we will come back there. So, we now put minus 3 minus 4, the corresponding grad j is minus 6 minus 8. j unfortunately has not decreased because it is w 1 square plus w 2 square. And if you try and find out what w k plus 1 is, which is minus 3 minus 4 minus 1 times minus 6 minus 8, you will get 3 4. Okay. So, you now you are back here. So, now we are sort of stuck in a cycle. Okay. It basically oscillates between 2 points 3 4 minus 3 minus 4, 3 4, so on and so forth. It just goes back and forth. J does not decrease at all, in fact, in this case. Okay, so, this case is also not useful for us because we would actually like to systematically come towards the actual minimum. Okay, so, this is an example which does not converge at all. Let us take a third case which is much smaller alpha which is 0.1. Okay. So, if we go through the exercise now, all that has changed from the previous two examples is the alpha that I have put which has become 0.1 and you see that this has become slightly better now. So, you have come to 2.4, 3.2 somewhere here. Okay, so, we have got a little bit better, at least it looks promising and we can now check what happens as we do future calculations. You will also notice that slowly now instead of either increasing or getting stuck at the same point, j is actually decreasing. Okay. So, I would recommend that you do this exercise yourself. Uh, you will also see um, one such example problem being given in the assignments, but you can see now that from 1.9, 2.5 it has come to 1.5, 2.0 which is a little bit better once again. Okay. So, we are getting somewhere here. So, slowly we are approaching the origin. Now, if you keep on repeating the exercise, so this is now the 30th iteration, not just the second iteration. So, we wrote a code and if you see the 30th iteration, you will see that it is actually getting quite close to 0. The cost has actually come very close to the minimal cost. Why is 4 the minimal cost? If w 1 and w 2 were 0, the actual cost would be 4. So, you are actually converging slowly and we have come somewhere here over the 30th iteration. Now, a couple of things are worth noting here. One is that we have not actually come to the total minimum 0 0 and in fact, if you use alpha equal to 0.1, you will never really come there because it will only keep on multiplying by small factors. There is no way that you can get 0 0 out of this. So, you will actually only slowly converge. Theoretically, it will take infinite iterations in order to get to 0 0, but numerically we know that below machine epsilon it will anyway stop. Okay. So, if you need to find out the absolute minimum where you know you your grad j goes to 0, you might actually need infinite iterations, which is why we actually need a stopping criteria. We need to say something like, okay, I am happy with two decimal places of accuracy. We will see how to do that in the next video. In the meantime, let us look at another alpha, alpha equal to 0.5. Okay. By now, you should be familiar with the whole process. So, if we put alpha equal to 0.5, you actually get 0, 0 right at the first step. So, you start here, you come here. Now, what happens to the algorithm once it comes to the right minimum? So, if you come to 0, 0, note that grad j is also 0, 0 because this is the actual minimum. j is 4 of course. and w k plus 1 is 0 0 because it is 0 0 minus alpha times 0 0. So, it is just there. So, in all future iterations it will always stay at 0 0. So, this is an advantage with gradient descent because you have w is equal to w minus alpha grad j. The moment grad j goes to 0, 
you will actually W will stop there. Okay. Of course, you can have this at a false minimum something like a saddle point also it can get stuck, but we will see cases of that sort in the coming weeks. The uh, important thing here is alpha equal to 0.5 actually converges quite rapidly. Okay. So, what we have seen so far is that it is possible for the gradient descent algorithm to either diverge um, which we saw for alpha equal to 2 or it could oscillate without diverging or converging. It could converge slowly which we saw with alpha equal to 0 0.1 or it could converge quite rapidly which happened with alpha equal to 0.5. Okay. In practical algorithms you will probably never see a case such as alpha equal to 0.5 where in one step you are going to get to the right answer. Okay. So, that will almost never happen, um, but typically you are going to see some manifestation of either slow convergence or fast convergence. So, <coughs> all these depend on the learning rate alpha part of algorithm design what you will have to do as a user is to choose the right alpha. Okay. There are methods which um, have some, some uh, variations on this which we will discuss in the coming weeks, but alpha is what is called a hyper parameter. Okay. A hyper parameter is a parameter that must be set before your learning algorithm actually starts. Okay. So, even before you actually learn you will actually have to set some parameters, uh, alpha is just one such example. In fact, an open problem typically in neural network and deep learning research is what is called uh, calculation of hyperparameters. Okay, so design of hyperparameters and coming up with optimal hyperparameters. Okay. Uh, in the next video, what we will see is some of the de details of gradient descent. For example, we will see a proof of the steepest descent uh, property, the fact that the gradient represents the direction of steepest descent. We will also look at the point that I mentioned briefly for the alpha equal to 0 0.1 case which is you need to decide when to stop the algorithm. You will never get actually to full minimum, but you need to decide when to stop. Okay. And the third thing which we have to uh, find out is finding out how to calculate gradients when there is no actual analytical expression for j available. So, these are the three issues that we will be discussing in the next video. Thank you.